And then we have flea market needs. Please take those uh, into consideration. If you can supply any of the needed items, it would be most appreciative. This week we have a memorial service coming up for Richard Woody at 11 a.m. on the 16th. Our flea market again is on the 20th. And if you'll notice on the back of your insert, there's a listing again. Thanks, we are collecting for veterans. We try to make a delivery once or twice a year over at Love Raven. There are things that they need, the, the shirts, the t-shirts and all would be a size medium to three extra large. They can go, you know, to all those sizes. And please, just like the shoebox ministry has things that they cannot use and must hold back from sending, we have a few list of items that the veterans cannot use and we discourage any donation of those items. So they're there for your information. At this time in our service, we try to extend the peace and welcome to everyone who is attending. And so uh, some of us stand in the end of the pew, some are up and down the aisles, but whatever is comfortable for you, uh, we want to share the peace of Christ. So the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you.
join me in our call to worship taken from Psalm 104. Bless the Lord, O my soul. May all that is in me bless God's holy name. Lord,
And stars, that's right, because, um, what was the guy's name, Prince Albert? No. The, the, the Captain who? Captain, Captain Louie. Captain Louie, not Prince Albert, Captain Louie. And he was an air pod pilot. He flew all over the place, yeah. But, but, but it was actually, so, but description of, Captain Louis Jr. is, well, so first, so it starts off in a neighborhood. Yeah, because, and, why about and, Louis? Louis was new in the neighborhood. Yeah, he was the yeah. new kid in yeah. the neighborhood, and there's, and that's when this, and that's when this song, the song, yeah. the new yeah. kid in new the kid neighborhood, plays, and, and so, and then, Louie talks to his toy plane, Red, and they decide on going, on visiting his old neighborhood. Right. right. And, then, then there's a, and then there's flashbacks. Yeah, and there's a new kid the in that old neighborhood, right? Yeah, well actually... Julio, Julio was the new kid in the old neighborhood. Well actually, I didn't... So <laughs> then they go... So then they enter a world of imagination. Yeah. And so Louis imagines that Red is large enough to sit in and fly around. And he does. And then but I he tell you what, Jeremiah, we can't go through the whole play because it took an hour and a half, right? <laughs> no, it's just what a, I wanted to ask you about. It's just a plot description. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, then they had to do something in order to help Louis <laughs> feel at home in this new neighborhood, right? Well, I, so how do you I do that? How do you do that? Well, I didn't. Anyway, <laughs> and then it turns out, and then, and then his, and his friends, and then his old friends are actually wearing Halloween costumes. Right. And, and they're short. And so what happens is they're going to make him Right, and then, it, then Louis finds out that those that those people are actually his old friends, right, right. and and that's when and they say that the reason why they were doing that was because it's Halloween, and then and they and then, make him feel good about being back in his old neighborhood, and when, then he can feel good about being there. Now I want to tell you something. Vi is new in our neighborhood in a sense. Saying, wait a minute. And we want to help Vi feel at home here, don't we? So there are various things we can do. One, we can say, oh, I remember because you came to the picnic not long ago. Yeah, and we can talk about the good time we had at the picnic. Yeah? And... In the balloons? Yeah, yeah we did. We had balloons, and, and it was really fun. And sometimes it's helpful if you give somebody something to kind of say, we're happy to have you here, and it means a lot for us to be here. Well, there's a lady in our congregation whose name is Glova, and she makes these wonderful little things. And it's just like a little, um, uh, it's just about the size of a small pot holder but in the middle of it, she's got a cross. And the cross stands for Jesus, right? And she makes these so we can give them to people and say, Jesus is with you, and we're happy that you're here with us. And we'd like you to have this one, okay? And we'll let your grandfather hang on to it for you. And, and then there's a smaller one that I'd like to give to Jeremiah to say, one, congratulations on your performance the other night, because you were really good. and to also say, God is always with you, okay? And sometimes if you have something you can touch and feel, it helps you feel good. Just to know <laughs> that people like you, and it's good to have you here. Let's pray. Lord, we know that you sent us, Lord, I'm praying now. Lord, we know that you sent Jesus as a sign that you love us, and that you welcome us into the neighborhood of your world. And so we thank you for him. And for every place we can go and share your welcome. In Jesus' name, amen.
about the new kid in the neighborhood, you can talk to Jeremiah at uh, the person fellowship time because he's got a lot to tell. It was a wonderful story, though. I have to tell you, it was heartwarming. There were a number of us there from the church to see the performance. And every child, you know, goes through this. Jeremiah will. He'll be the new kid in the neighborhood of the middle school this year, right? And so every child needs to know that, you know, it, it takes a bit of doing to become. But then also others need to know that a part of that doing is up to you. you got to make people feel welcome. And they did. It was, it was a warm experience and some great performances. Oh, I wrote one couple people's names now. We're going to see them again. We'll see them again. Amen. Amen. Let's spend some time in prayer. Joys and concerns are what we're about. Collecting that for which we give thanks and looking to God for that for which we need His help. We need God's power and God's strength to be with us. But we also need to look around and know that God's strength and power is with us. And we rejoice in seeing those signs. Uh, speaking of signs, I've left on the table up here some signs from my memorial service for Wanda Rock and Ball on Tuesday. Knowing that um, in addition to the memorial we carry in our hearts, there are a lot of memorials for Wanda throughout the church. And so I left some here to remind us of the work that she gave to the children of the church through the things that she made, through the little puppets that she worked with, through the many, many craft projects that she did and that wonderful shoebox ministry that she brought to the church. So we, we honor her presence uh, with us today uh, and give thanks to God for her and continue to keep her family in prayer as they miss her and work through that grieving process. Other prayers of thanks and of rejoicing or of uh, help that we bring. Well, some time ago, I would, uh, every Sunday, ask for prayers for friend Inez Mix. Yeah. There was one good eye was going away. Yeah. And they tried something that failed. Yeah. But now, the two specialist surgeons at the Boomer Eye Clinic last week operated on her eye huh? again. I mean, huh? She was down blind. Huh? And uh, they said it was successful. Huh? And she is beginning to see again. Oh. Huh? And wow. over a period of time, huh? uh, when the swelling goes down, yeah. Yeah. Uh, she will get her sight back. Oh. Very wow. well. So, is one was the prayer that yeah. that part of it is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're really happy. Really happy that her sight has been restored. Amen. Amen. Trish? I want to pray for my father in law. Uh, Your father? My father in law. In -law. He's now in an institution for Alzheimer's. Uh, for Alzheimer's. Uh, what's his name? Richard. Richard. Let us keep Richard in our prayers. Uh, let the Lord be with him in that uh, place for his uh, Alzheimer's and helping him to find comfort and strength there. Uh, Sharon? Yeah, I'm the first family. My um, friend Brenda is a work her um, grandmother. Yes. I don't know what the grandmother's name is. But yeah. she's 86, so she lived with them. Yeah, good. But just for the first family. But well, let's keep Brenda's family in our prayers. Amen. Amen. Susan? I continue prayers for my brother all right. Um, they still have not figured out what's wrong. And uh, he's willing for a procedure on Tuesday. Oh, okay. For Ray. Procedure on Tuesday. Let's keep him in prayer. So, we're trying to figure out what is that all about. Bobby? Um, could we keep Bill Claus in our prayers? Yeah. Um, we're not sure if he has a cold or a virus or a uh, lot. Uh, so, if we can keep him in our prayers. Okay. And also, we want to keep um, Peggy Papesh uh, um, in our prayers and yeah. the, the loss of service here that's uh, as we mentioned on Tuesday at 11 for Richard Whitty and we keep uh, Peggy and others will gather them in our prayers and uh, ask that the Lord be with uh, Bill Claus. Bill is now 98 isn't he correct? He is. Yeah and he's at Encore. Um, we pray the Lord strengthen and comfort him. It's good to have Mike here 
And now we keep uh, Melinda in our prayers as she continues to struggle for recovery from that second knee surgery. And uh, Michael saying it's a tough recovery this time. So we pray the Lord be with her. Ease of pain and uh, courage, I think, uh, to continue on that journey. Pastor, I can I pray for my, fr my friend and her family. So my friend, um, her name is Rachel, and um, her dad has some kind of cancer. I don't know what the uh, type of cancer it was, but they, they're not sure how bad it is or anything. And she's having a really hard time with it. You know, she wasn't able to celebrate her birthday, and she's a yeah. You know, she's more worried about her dad than anything else right now. So. Let's keep uh, Rachel's dad in our prayer. Yeah. Sorry. I have one more. Okay. Sarah uh, Russell, I don't know the American name, but she used to be a member of here, and she just had a little baby girl. It's JB. She's only two pounds and six ounces. But she's doing good, but just keep her that the progress of the Lord, you know, because yeah. she, she yeah. is. She's two pounds. The mother's name is Sarah. Is that right? The mom's name is Sarah, and the baby. J.D. 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 And she is two pounds and six ounces. And she doesn't Yeah, yeah. So we pray, God, in your hands, O oh Lord, very precious. Yeah, safe and clear journey to growth at home. Amen. Amen. Good, Bobby. Um, the progress of Nia and Tucker. They should um, perform on the cesarean this Thursday. Oh, oh. With Nia. Now, you know, Tucker is the baby that was removed from his mother's womb, operated on him, put back in his womb. I, yes. <laughs> did I just say that? But that is what happened. And uh, cesarean this, this week? This Thursday. This week. Let's it keep it in was prayer. tentatively set up for this Thursday because they believe in 32 weeks. Okay. Um, so we look for the continuation of that miracle. Yes. Undocumented people who are living in yeah. fear, especially yeah. today. Yeah. A lot of fear. A lot of fear in the migrant community in, in Baltimore and throughout the nation. And children who are the children who are separated from their families. And, and children that have been separated from their families. And the threat of more separation. So we keep them in prayer. We pray for our nation to be able to find a, a fair and a comprehensive. Uh, immigration policy, so we know what we're doing. We don't. Uh, we also want to pray for the people in Louisiana, Arkansas. This is a fierce flood. This is a terrible thing. And um, so much help is going to be needed. And so much help that um, uh, is needed and can't get there. I mean, how do you stop the water from flowing? You can't. And we just pray God to protect life and, um, and to bring um, help as soon as possible, wherever possible. Let the Lord be with those folks. Bill? It's in the midst of all that's going on in the world. Yeah. It's a joy for the believer to know that God is still in control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. There's a poster that I posted up that uh, Jane Mary gave me. It says, uh, don't tell God how big the storm is. Tell the storm how big God is. Amen? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the witness. Let's pray. Good, gracious, wonderful, large, loving, almighty, all-caring, Father of us all, Lord of us all, Creator of us all, Lover of us all, be with us. We praise you, Lord, because your goodness is all around us. And bigger are you than the flood. Greater are you than our problems. More wonderful are you than our highest thought. And you, Lord, closer to us than our next breath. And we give you thanks that we stand present with you and you stand present with us and we stand together. We thank you for that. We praise you, Lord, for all the ways you've seen your blessing in our midst. For children that perform wonderful plays. For children that have great days at camp. For children who, through the summer, find ways to grow and families that nourish them. We give you thanks. For the beginning of life, Lord, that we celebrate in prayer today. 
for Sarah's child, that it may be well with her and growth may come. For Tucker, Lord, that he be born into wonderful life and a miracle continue in his birth. We look to you, Lord, and ask your blessing. We know that there are many who walk in this life needing your help to find the next step. We think of Belinda and pray that it be well with her. We think of our friend Bill, that uh, you might strengthen him in his health and in his just ability to get along. We pray, Lord, you be with him and, and, and strengthen him, heal him. We pray, oh Lord, for Ray that uh, you might, uh, through this procedure or one procedure or another, just find that which is revealed to those doctors what it is that's going on with him that they might prescribe the right therapy and not find health and wholeness again. Be with Christine's friend Rachel, her father's illness, that it may be well with him that you might uh, guide toward health and strength. We rejoice, O oh Lord, in Inez finding her eyesight. Ah, oh, it's a great gift. It's a great gift. And we pray that uh, that just grow and her eyesight become more clear life just open up in that midst. We look to you, Lord, for all of your blessings to us. Protect those who are in our country and whatever life they may be living at this time, may it be a life that uh, finds safety and security. Bring families together and keep them that way. We pray, O oh Lord, for those folks that are suffering all the floods of the Louisiana, Arkansas region, that you might uh, find that, help them find their way through, and uh, that even now the levees might be strengthened, that even in this moment, boats might arrive to rescue people, that even in this time, fresh water might be found, so there'd be something to drink, that even on this day, there'd be people going forth to help others. But we know, Lord, that's your wish, that's your will, that's why we're here, and we pray that that happen in miraculous and wonderful ways throughout that flood-stricken region. Be with us, Lord. Help us to know your will. Help us to find your way. Help us to walk in it. Help us to be those who know every day that, Lord, you're bigger than a storm, that, Lord, you're bigger than our problems, but that your love is largest of all. And let your compassion just wash over us. Help us to stand strong and to share that compassion with others. others. For we ask it in Jesus' name as we try to live as he show us. And pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So we carry on. So what we want to do now um, is is uh, to uh, be the special music for the morning and and to just uh, sing the songs that you love best. Okay, um, we're not going to sing all morning, but we'll sing enough of them so that you really feel good about singing. Okay, uh, so everybody's got a song. Tell I saw your hand. Tell us first. I just want you to know. Uh, and everybody else looking for a song too. It'll be a challenge to Charlie. He knows just about every song there is. But somebody's going to find one that maybe he doesn't know. And if so, Charlie, you just say, next. Uh -oh. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> It'll be all right. Unless that person wants to sing a solo, and that'd be all right too. Thelma, okay. what shall we sing? One third. And it's called? God will take care of you. God will take care of you. All right. Thank all right. Can we you. sing the first two verses? Uh -huh. Verses 1 and 2, God will take care of you, number 
Four. I am four nineteen. Four nineteen. I am thine, O oh Lord. I have heard your voice. <coughs> what about um, verse two? Okay, one and two. Okay. Verse two verses. I am thine, O oh Lord.
probably we better do two more just to give Diane a chance. Where you got Diane? 5.58. Five, where are the fives now, my friends? 5.58 we're singing. Huh? What is that? We are the church. We are the church. Huh? We are the church.
Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, you may hear with joy what you say to us today. Our first scripture comes to us from the Old Testament, the book of Amos, chapter 7, verses 7 to 16a. This is what he showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with, with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. And high places of Isaac shall be made desolate. The sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste, and I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, Bethel, sent to the king of Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from this, his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there, and prophesy there, but never again prophesy to Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is the temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son. But I am a herdsman and a dresser of the sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock. The Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. Now therefore, hear the word of the Lord. The next scripture lesson is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. Please rise. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, Who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers, who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them, and he put him on his own animal and brought him to an inn, took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him. And when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? And he said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. This is the word of the Lord. In our hymn book that's called the Faith. 
faith we sing, a little song called The Summons. I would like us to sing just those uh, first three verses, if we could, because what Jesus is doing, what the prophets have done, is to call us to hear the summons of God, to follow God's way. Let's sing the summons, number two. 2130 is the faith we sing. Now, um, this is what's supposed to happen to everybody. I mean, 
you know the story of the of the Good Samaritan, and you can say, oh, we're always talking about the story of the Good Samaritan, and we are, because it always has fresh lessons for us. And I think the lesson that comes out of it today is that as the prophets made utterances that were rather poetic in their expression and compiled into scrolls and now into books, Jesus was a prophet whose utterances were largely given in parables. See, the poets spoke more in kind of poetry stuff, right? Oh yeah, let justice flow like a fountain and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. And you could remember that because in the poetry, Jesus would speak in terms of stories that you'd remember and they would constantly pick at your brain. So the story of the Good Samaritan, I mean, it'd be fun to talk a lot about that this morning because of the kinds of things that it offered. I mean, who would you in this day have played the role of a Samaritan? And there are still a few Samaritans that exist over in the area of Israel and Palestine. Uh, but uh, what Jesus was talking about is uh, uh, that outsider whom you disparage. Uh, that is the one who comes and shows compassion. Maybe the Samaritan would be the undocumented one who came down the road and helped the man was in the ditch, but of course when he took the man to the inn, the undocumented one was arrested and deported. I don't know. But Jesus in his stories was a prophet because what he wanted to tell was stuff that we needed to hear that would change our life. Now the story of the Good Samaritan ends with a prophetic word. What, is, what does it end with? It ends with Jesus saying, go and do likewise. Huh? Go and don't do what you have been doing. Go and do something new. And he's talking to a lawyer. And the lawyer has been doing what? Just asking lots of questions. And Jesus says the only question is, are you going to be compassionate to those who are around you or not? And if you go and do that, and I like to think that the lawyer did. Oh, yeah. Even lawyers can be compassionate. huh? As a matter of fact, the best lawyers, in my opinion, are compassionate ones. I won't go there. I was going to tell you a story, but I'm not going to tell you a story. <laughs> uh, but, the, but he did. And he, and he did go and do likewise, and his life was changed ever thereafter. Jesus the prophet. All these other prophets lead up to Jesus the prophet. All these other prophets lead up to our knowing that what Jesus wants to say, that in every inch of our being, to every second of our life, the law of God pertains and nothing else matters. And the law of God is you love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength and your neighbor as yourself. And nothing else matters. Amos took it to the king. Amos took it to the king. What was the king's name? Uh, Ahaziah, something like that. And Amos said to the king, you're not doing right. And you're leading the country in the wrong direction. And you know what the king said? Go tell it to the Judahites. Go somewhere else and prophesy. I don't want to hear that. But, I, but Amos said, no, the Lord has told me to tell you. You have to live according to the rule of the Lord our God. And nothing else matters. And so I come, Amos said, and tell you that. And you better change or it will lead to your destruction. And I'll tell you how. And he did. And what Amos said is, I, I have no choice except to tell you these things. And it is the truth, sir, whether you want to hear it or not. And they proclaimed the word over and over and over again. And most of the time, the kings, the princes, the rulers would ignore it. Because they were so much wrapped up in what they wanted to do. And how they wanted to do it. That they couldn't change. Most of the time... Most of the people heard the word but didn't change because they're so wrapped up and this is the way I want to do it, this is the way I do it, and that, 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 that they couldn't hear the word of God. Most of the time, the religious leaders couldn't hear it. Oh yeah, the priests went out. I mean, the prophets would go after the priests too. Amos says, I hate, I despise your feasts. The noise of your solemn assemblies make me sick. But, uh, 
Beat your swords into plowshares and your spears into pruning hooks, and I think we can get something done. Yeah? They would refuse to hear it, but fortunately, a faithful few would gather around these prophets and write down. What did he say? Oh, yeah, that's what he said, and they'd write it down, and they put it in a scroll, and they put the scroll in the special places, and every once in a while, when it seemed like the country was completely out of kilter, they would bring the scrolls out and read them, and read them as loud as they could in the hopes that they could turn the country back into the direction that God wanted them to turn. Yeah, where the poor are not downtrodden. Right? Where the bulk of the money doesn't go into armaments and war. All the prophets, the prophets railed against war all the time because these kings love to go to war. And they kept pointing out that war only leads to destruction. Why are you doing this? You don't trust in the strength of your arms. You trust in the goodness of God. And so forth. And so forth. Always a difference between how we live in our government in our communities and in our church and how God wants us to live. I know, I know. A lot of times we're doing pretty good. We love our neighbor and we look after him. But what the prophets say and what Jesus says, you can do better. You can do better. You can make this into the kingdom of God. You want to do that? You make this into the kingdom of God where each person has a right to stand. Each person has a right to life. Each person a place to live, a job to perform, an education to get, and health care that makes their life good. Each person can live that way. And the prophets, Jesus chief among them, says, work on it. Work on it. It'll make you better. And it'll make the world better. So we're going to listen to the prophets for the next four or five times I'm here. And, um, and see what else the prophets might have to say to us. Whether you want to hear it or not. We'll listen and see what God has to say. Let's pray. Lord, you have an amazing ability to speak to people's hearts. And the prophets prove that. The prophets make it absolutely clear that you speak to people's hearts. We pray, Lord, not just to hear the prophets. But we pray that through them we might hear you speak to our hearts and make us every day to be better the people that you call your people. Every day more significant witnesses to your word because we love you and we strive, oh Lord, to love our neighbor as ourselves. In Jesus' name. Modern Affirmation in your hymnals, number 885. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father.
I think I've been converted by Charlie's playing. And what I like is that uh, rather than singing where across the crowded ways of life, if we would go back uh, to that song that he just played, two, 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 three. And the faith we sing, I know you gotta put that one hymn on pick up another item. So let's see if we can do that. Because um, you're you, you know, you just heard it, so let's sing it. Uh, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other, we'll work side by side. Let's sing two, 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 three. We'll sing uh, we'll, we'll sing the first and second verses of that song.